Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this video is about noises on board airplanes. Where is it coming from and is it something that you should be afraid of? So we start our little movie with the cabin crew doing their safety demonstration in the background and the airplane is being towed by a pushback truck. So the first thing we're going to listen to in this video is what it sounds like when a jet engine is being started up. So I would like you to listen for a deep tone. There you go, that deep tone just indicates that the engine is being started up. And now perhaps something interesting, you can start seeing that the airplane starts moving backwards. And I can tell you that most airplanes don't have a gear, a reverse gear. So this is something that the pushback truck is helping us with. And the whole idea with the pushback team is that they will observe for hazards around the airplane. They will communicate to the pilots if they see anything out of the extraordinary. And they're just there to help that everything is looking clear and fine when the pilot starts up the engines. So while we're starting up the engines here, there's a lot of uh, systems that will be uh, powering up in the background. And one of them is the hydraulic system, and you will be able to hear the hydraulics powering up in just a few seconds. In such case, remove your face mask and place the yellow oxygen mask over your nose and mouth. So those sharp consecutive uh, tones, that was just the hydraulic pressure just building up. So now you can hear a second deep tone, and that's just indicating that the second engine is being started up. Now, unlike in a car, the starting of the engine just takes a little bit longer. So it usually takes maybe about 45 to 60 seconds to start up an engine. Now, it really depends on the airplane type, and I, some airplanes can also start up two engines at the same time. But the normal thing is that pilots will start up one engine at a time. So what we will see here in a few seconds as well is that the pilots are configuring the airplane for takeoff already and what they will be doing in just a few seconds is that they will start lowering the flaps. So the flaps you can see at the back end of the wing and they will just increase the wing area helping the airplane to generate lift. Now, if you look towards the back end of the wing, you will be able to see that the flaps are being extended. And also in a few seconds, you will see the pushback truck that has helped the airplane being put into the taxi position. So that is going to be visible near the wingtip now. So that's the pushback vehicle, what it looks like. So at this stage, the pilot is asking for taxi clearance and once it has been received, they will start moving forward. So there you go. Of course, you can't hear the pilots being given the taxi clearance, but that is uh, what's happening now. So this video was uh, shot out of uh, Heathrow and with Heathrow being a major airport in London, uh, we will spend a little bit of time together on the ground before uh, we get to the runway. It just gives me an opportunity to maybe talk about some, some other things before we get to the uh, takeoff phase. So you might have experienced that you get on board, the uh, doors are closed and then you just wait and wait and wait. And the reason sometimes is that the pilots are told to wait with the engine start because of course once they have started the engines, the engine starts burning fuel and fuel of course is cost money and it's bad for the environment. So if the air traffic control, control can see that there's a bit of a queue, they will tell the pilots to just wait a little bit so they can more or less just taxi in one go towards the runway instead of waiting with the engines um, running. So on the way out to the um, 
runway. The pilots will perform uh, several checks. One of them is a control check. You will be able to see a control check on top of the wing now. It's just some panels being moved up and down. So that's what a control check looks like. Another in interesting information perhaps is that uh, when the engines are started up and the uh, pilots put the engine generator online, you may sometimes just see a little bit of a flickering of the fastened seatbelt signs and sometimes the public announcement system is being interrupted and all that is is just uh, a power transfer. So you could see there was another flight control check and something interesting here as we do the turn try and see if you can spot the Concorde so there you go at the wingtip the Concorde so with Heathrow being uh, one of the major bases for or if not the major base for BA uh, you will see a lot of BA airplanes here and the big building you can see here is uh, an airplane hangar so that's where they do service on the airplanes and you can also here see one of the uh, newest airplanes from Airbus the Airbus 350 another thing I just want to make you aware of is that um, we're just approaching a training area here for the firemen and you will actually be able to see one of the uh, aircraft that they do training on firefighting training so that's the green airplane you can see in the background here and sometimes if there is a uh, training going on then you will actually be able to see fire and flames from uh, airplanes looking like this so it's nothing to do with a an airplane that has had an accident this is just a training platform for the firemen so when the pilots are approaching the runway they will give a command uh, to the cab crew just uh, advising them to be ready for takeoff So this is what that sounds like and that's just an indication to the cabin crew that they are the pilots are approaching the runway and that the takeoff will happen uh, briefly. So at this stage the pilots are just doing a final check of all the instruments before the enter the runway and what we're going to hear as well is that they will do a brief engine check before they actually advance the engines to takeoff power. So an engine check is where the pilots advance the uh, power to let's say 40% and then they will just check that everything sounds and looks normal before they advance the power. So this is what we're going to hear in a sec when the pilots get the clearance for takeoff. engines are spooling up. So this is the control engine check. And there you go. Now full takeoff power is set and you can see that the airplane is accelerating down the runway. Now the runway is about 45 to 60 meters wide and during the takeoff run the pilots will of course stay on the center of the runway and just making some small control inputs to stay on the center. When the airplane has reached a certain speed, they will start what's called a rotation. That's what you can see now. And very soon after getting airborne, the pilots will select the gear up. Now on some airplane types, you will be actually able to hear when the gear goes up in the wheel bay. It sounds like a little bit of a bump and sometimes you can actually also feel that the wheel are going up in the wheel bay. 
and on this particular day there was a little bit of uh, crosswind so you can actually see if you look out towards the uh, tip of the wing that the pilots are making some minor adjustments uh, for the crosswind next thing we're going to see is the flaps being retracted and the pilots being given a turn towards uh, the well the right direction because what happened this day was that we started uh, in the opposite direction of the destination which is quite normal sometimes you will always start in the in a headwind so if you start off in the wrong direction then uh, the pilots will of course be looking at going in a direct line as soon as possible there we just saw the flaps being retracted and it's quite normal when you approach a little cloud layer that the um, there will be some very very light um, turbulence and you can see in just a few seconds that the the wing is just jumping a little bit up and down that is just due to going through a little bit of a layer where there's a few clouds that's completely normal now the pilots have been given another turn and very soon we're going to see the airplane going into clouds some clouds and sometimes when you go through clouds it's, it's normal to just pick up a little bit of, of light turbulence actually something cool to see here you can actually see in the clouds that the uh, airplane is being reflected and there you go already out of the clouds a little interesting thing now if you look at the wing the uh, wing has changed a little bit in color and that's just due to the temperatures when it was passing through the clouds. So of course during this stage everybody is sat down, the fastened seatbelt sign is on. But when the pilots are assessing that it's safe to do so, they will start releasing the cabin crew so the cabin crew can start their service. And the reason why they don't just uh, release everybody at one go is because normally when we uh, take off the seatbelt signs, people start queuing for the toilet and that just makes it a little bit more difficult for the cabin crew to start their service so we normally as pilots we just give the cabin crew just a chance to uh, get ready for the service before we let go of the seatbelt signs for the rest of you so the way we normally would communicate to the cabin that it's clear or the cabin crew that it's clear to start the service is that we will just very quickly flicker the seatbelt signs to go off and then back on again so that would be like a double ding you will hear in a few seconds so that signal that was just the pilot signaling to the cab crew that it's safe to do their service so the next thing I would like to show you or just demonstrate is um, when the airplane goes up to its cruising altitude the pilots will uh, reduce the engines a little bit and that may sound like the engines have suddenly stopped and they haven't stopped I can assure you but it's just the transition from a climb to the cruise phase can make it sound like the engines have suddenly stopped but I just wanted to make sure that you hear that what it sounds like so 
So we made a little bit of a fast forward. Uh, at this stage, you can hear in the background that the cabin crew are doing the uh, announcements. And this is just the stage where the cabin crew will be preparing the cabin for landing. So just as you saw them for takeoff, where they will be going through the cabin, checking various things, they will be doing a check uh, before landing that everything is as it should be. Now pilots will typically start the uh, descent or so leaving the cruising altitude about 30 minutes to landing. So just as I did for the uh, takeoff, I thought it would be useful to just make a few comments on what's happening during the uh, landing stage. So now we jumped a little bit forward again. You can see the airplane is now closer to the ground. And one of the first things you're going to see during this clip here is that the pilots are just making a turn which will align the uh, aircraft with the runway. Now maybe something quite useful to know is that both pilots are fully capable of landing the airplane. So should something happen to one of the pilots, the other pilot can take over and safely land the aircraft. But here we will see in a few seconds that the pilots are making a correction to align the aircraft with the runway. So the next stage we're going to see uh, being performed is that the pilots will start configuring the aircraft for landing. So that involves extending the flaps, then usually the next thing that will happen is to extend the gear and then we will go through various stages of flaps before the airplane is fully configured for landing. Here you see the uh, flaps slowly being extended from the back of the wing. And the next thing that you're going to hear, if you listen very careful, is uh, just the gear being extended. So that little bump there, there was just the gear being lowered. And because now the gear is fully extended, there will also naturally be a lot more wind noise uh, around the airplane. And that is something that you can hear actually on most types of plane. The next thing that will happen is that the pilots will select another stage of flaps. And there you could actually also hear the motor that drives the flaps. And just in a few seconds, we're going to see the pilot selecting the landing stage of flaps. Now, one thing that I would like to just explain is that there could be various reasons why the pilots are considering it's safer to start a climb again than to land. One of the things could be traffic, it could be weather related, or it could also be technical related. But the maneuver that the pilots are going to perform if, if it's safer to not to land is what's called a go-around. So during the go-around what the pilots are doing is that they're configuring the airplane for a climb instead of a landing. Now that involves switching a lot of different things and the pilots will not have as a priority to talk to the cabin. So that's why the cabin crew, in the case of a go-around, will make an announcement on behalf of the pilots and when we have a suitable time and everything is again configured for climb, we may have time to just give a brief announcement saying, well, we will be coming around for another landing or we will be landing at somewhere else. But while the whole maneuver from a passenger point of view, view might be a little bit stressful, I can assure you that it's a controlled maneuver and the pilots are looking after your safety. So now we can see that the airplane is getting closer towards the ground. And when the airplane touches down, you might hear a little bump, but you will also see some panels on top of the wing being extended. And those panels on the top of the wing is called spoilers. You may also hear that the engines are 
being used to do what's called air reverse. So there you have the uh, spoilers coming up. The engines have been put into reverse. That means they blow a little bit of air forward instead of pushing air backwards. So when the airplane reaches a safe taxi speed, what happens normally is the captain crew just starts welcoming you to the destination. And at the same time when the airplane is leaving the runway, the pilots will take the spoilers down and they will start retracting the flaps. So just as for uh, when we saw the airplane taxiing out of Heathrow, again at big airports that could be quite a long time for uh, taxiing and it's quite a normal procedure that if there is a long taxi distance that the pilots will actually shut down one of the engines so the uh, airplane is only taxiing on uh, one engine. So it depends a little bit from uh, operator to operator, but uh, some operators will allow you at this stage to actually turn on your mobile phones. Thank you for your understanding. So if you listen very careful here in a few seconds, what the pilots are going to do is they're actually going to shut down one engine. And if you listen very careful, you might be able to just hear what that sounds like. So that little change of noise there, that was just the pilots shutting down an engine. So we will fast forward a little bit again to a point uh, just shortly before arriving at the gate. So this is something that pilots normally communicate to the cabin crew that we're shortly at the gate. That was just the pilots saying that we're soon at the gate and then you will hear the cab manager making a command to the crew. And the next thing that's going to happen here is that the pilots are going to set the parking brake and they're going to shut down the uh, remaining engine. And then you will hear the uh, seatbelt signs going off and a command from the cab crew again that it's safe to open the doors. So there you go, engines are being shut down, seatbelt signs, and that's the cabin crew command. And what you hear now in the background is just a hydraulic system powering down. Uh, very soon you will be start seeing uh, various ground uh, vehicles approaching the aircraft and they are just uh, assisting the uh, aircraft with offloading uh, the bags and the cargo hold and uh, if the airplane is due to fly again there's a whole procedure as well that uh, reconfigures the aircraft for another flight. Of course at this stage as well that the uh, majority of passengers will probably be queuing in the uh, center aisles getting the bags out and everything uh, but normally there's, there's really no rush to get out and stand in the middle aisle. You can uh, just remain seated until it's clear to get out. So guys, that was it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, remember that you can always send us a message. Um, really hope that you liked the uh, video. So remember to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos from us. Until next time, bye.